how are we doing today? I'm going to read you a story. It's called Mr. Seahorse, and it's by Eric Carl. He's the one that wrote the words for the story. Mr. and Mrs. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea. Mrs. Seahorse began to wiggle and twist this way and that. They are the two seahorses. It's time for me to lay my eggs, she said. Can I help? asked Mr. Seahorse. Oh, yes, thank you, said Mrs. Seahorse. And she laid her eggs into a pouch on Mr. Seahorse's belly. I'll take good care of our eggs, said Mr. Pre Seahorse. I promise. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a group of trumpet fish hidden in a patch of reeds. Where could they be? Let's turn the page and find out. There they are, the trumpet fish. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. Nice job. They were camouflaged, which means an animal can hide itself in its environment to stay safe. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. St Stickleback? asked Mr. Seahorse. Delighted, replied Mr. Stickleback. I just built a nest right away, and Mrs. Stickleback laid her eggs into it. Now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. Keep up the good work, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a lionfish hidden behind a coral the lionfish, my friends. There he is! He was hiding! But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Tilapia? said Mr. Seahorse. Mr. Tilapia couldn't answer. His mouth was full of eggs. I know, I know, said Mr. Seahorse. Mrs. Tilapia laid her eggs, and now you're taking good care of them until they hatch. Mr. Tilapia nodded his head. You must be very happy, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a pair of leaf fish hidden among the seaweed. Where are those leaf fish? Can we see them? Let's turn it and find out. There they are. One, two leaf fish. Before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Curtis, said Mr. Seahorse. Perfectly fine, replied Mr. Curtis. Mrs. Curtis laid her eggs and I have stuck them on my head. Can you see? Right there. Now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. You are doing a good job, Mr. Seahorse said, and he swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a stonefish hidden behind a rock. See the stonefish. 
there it is. He was hiding too. Before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Pipe? said Mr. Seahorse. Couldn't be better, replied Mr. Pipe. Mrs. Pipe laid her eggs along my belly. Now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. You should feel very proud of yourself, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam on his way. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Bullhead, said Mr. Seahorse. Tip top, replied Mr. Bullhead. Mrs. Bullhead laid her eggs and the eggs hatched. Now I'm babysitting. You're doing a fine job, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam on his way. Look at all the babies that Mr. Bullhead has. The time had come for the seahorse babies to be born. Mr. Seahorse wiggled and twisted this way and that. At last, the babies tumbled from Mr. Seahorse's pouch and swam away. One baby turned around and tried to come back into the pouch. Oh no, said Mr. Seahorse. I do love you, but now you're ready to be on your own. Can we count how many baby seahorse he had? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a lot of baby seahorses. Isn't it fun how in this story the dads did all the taking care of the babies and the eggs? Can't wait for you guys to come back and listen to another story. Bye.